Hi, I'm the Morlander and this is Morlander EDC. Now, I say this and I always, always, always hope that it comes across genuine because as a, as a YouTube content creator, it's something that I want to make sure that everybody really appreciates is, is uh, as genuine as I, as I want it to come across, but it's something I always feel that I have to say. And that is that whenever somebody reaches out to me, you know, they've looked at my content and they've gone, we like what this guy's doing, we'd like to see if he'd like to work with us, and they reach out to me, it is 100% a humbling experience. Um, I certainly don't take it for granted that I write off to people, right, how old does that make me sound? That I email people and say, look, I'd like to try one of yours, would you mind sending me one? But on the opposite side, when they contact me, yeah, it, it really just blow me away and it, it just, yeah, it humbles me. So whenever it's a company, especially companies that I have a lot of respect for and I genuinely love their products, one of my favorite, if not my favoritest knife is the CVV Elementum. I freaking love this knife. So when CVV reached out and said, would you like to test and make some content on our new CVV Button Lock 2 Elementum, I was just blown away. So first things first, I would love, and I am honored to say thank you uh, to CVV for sending this my way. Um, yeah, blew me away and yeah, honestly, genuinely humbled, so damn it, I've dropped it. So thank you, I'm not gonna pick it up. Well, I will pick it up, obviously. Uh, so yes, thank you, uh, and yeah, kind of, kind, of, kind of speechless, it's a beautiful knife. So, but let's move on, because I don't wanna come across as just like, just starstruck kind of thing, but yeah. So, thank you very much. I will leave a link below, not on the floor where the knife is right now, uh, so that you can see more from them. Uh, but yes, for now, let's turn the camera around, I'll pick that up, and we'll take a closer look at the CVV Button Lock 2 Elementum. Knife boxings aren't particularly a special occasion. I think when you get to some of the higher end knives, uh, the boxing experience, you know, you definitely get a bump up. Uh, CVV are a mid-range, now I mean that with all due respect because the quality of the knives that you get from CVV for me are the higher end of the mid-range knives. Um, okay, so unboxing wise, it, it, it is a very standard affair as far as CVV knives are concerned, although obviously I'm doing this on camera, which is why I'm struggling. Uh, but they all come in one of these nice little CVV sheaths, which you can open this up and you get your standard fare inside. So you get a little CVV sticker, you get a CVV Elementum sticker, there's some warranty and... Um, maintenance kind of information in there as well you always get these and these are really nice and it's great that they add these in but you get a nice little CVV branded microfiber cloth on the inside you have this really nice plush felt I, uh, and there we have there we have the knife itself so let's close that up I'm gonna show you more of a comparison with these. Uh, so this is the second version of this knife. I didn't own the first version, so I'm not too, well, I, you know, I, I'll leave some bits around here, you know, as far as what have been improved. The vast majority of it has, has been around the actual function of the, uh, of, of, of the button. Uh, but what we'll also do is do a bit of a comparison, which I think is probably the one thing that you'd like to see more, or at least the one that I can give you more information not having the previous version of this, is a, is, is a bit of a comparison between the CVV Elementum and the, uh, the button lock two elementum that, that, I, that I have here. So I'm just gonna put that to one side for a second. Um, so going around some of the features on here, I'll leave some information down here as far as the sizes are concerned. Um, so the blade, blade has a really, really butter smooth finish to it, which I suppose it seems daft that I've just said that because you, ne you never get a knife that you run your finger across and you think, well, that's quite rough. Uh, but it is a hollow grind on here. Uh, it has a drop point with a swedge on here. I don't think it's a clip 
point mainly because uh, the the um, the spine of the knife does come all the way down to the tip there but there is a swedge in there which is quite nice it's a reasonably high saber grind as it, as the grind doesn't go all the way up to the top and quite a small ricasso on there as well it doesn't go any further into there nice sharpening choil on the end here um, I will have to state at this point as well that if you are trying to carry this in public here in the UK this isn't a UK knife friendly knife not illegal to own though you know I, I, I own this I own the original one which isn't legal to carry in public but again it's not an illegal knife when I'm out here in the woods it's perfectly fine the main reason for that is that it isn't a slip joint and it does have a locking mechanism there um, but you know as far as for you to see it's a very perfectly sized and weighted knife the blade material on here this is the nitro v now we did have to check this it is nitro v because i'd sworn swore that this one was d2 um so yeah so they've they've gone up um up a bump in uh, blade material as well which is which is really nice to see the spine on this is really nice and rounded obviously you're really not going to be using this to strike ferro rods if you wanted to i guess you could grind a 90 degree angle onto there you just need to make sure that you're being careful so that you're not affecting the heat treat and then there is some jimping here at the back should you want to be able to so if picking up pieces of wood just to be able to maybe do some work on then uh, you do have that little bit of extra grip there on the back um, to stop your finger going forward or at least your thumb slipping forward with it being a locking knife you don't really need to worry too much about that it's it's a nice feature that it's on there um, but it's more of an EDC knife but should you want to use this outside you certainly don't have any issues with that the material that the um, that the um, scales are made from, I forgot what these were called then for a second. Uh, so it is a two part scale, you have the liner that's on the inside that's made from stainless steel and then you have on this one, so this is a, a natural G10 scale. Um, but with the with all of the elementums there are lots of different traces that you can have as far as the scales are concerned the original one that I have here this is has a micarta scale on it and I will say of all of the different micarta knives that I own the micarta from CVV is 100% the nicest I don't know if they've done something to it or if they've pre-brushed it because after a while with my carter you will find that the fibers start to come through the resin so it's got really nice kind of soft felty texture to it you can get this in my carter as well uh, but it, I thought it'd be useful to give you uh, to, to show you the difference between the two uh, as far as that's concerned the scales on here as I mentioned so these are G10 and this is a natural G10 it does does look like it should glow in the dark so if we're just gonna focus there it does look like it should glow in the dark unfortunately it doesn't CVV with the natural G10 if you put something in this so that it would glow in the dark oh that would be chef's kiss that would be so nice on the inside but what it does do is allow a little bit of light to come through here so on the inside liner you can see in there that it has been skeletonized to help reduce down some of the weight on this if you're concerned about the weight just don't be it's not a particularly heavy knife i think for a standard edc style knife it's you know it's it's in that kind of weight bracket for the construction you have the rotation pin on here when you flip it over uh, there is a hex nut on there so that you can undo this should you want to do some maintenance on here and then on the back here there are two further barrel spacers which on either side you then have fastenings for those again if you're wanting to do some maintenance on there the liner on the inside of the scales there is a cutout on here so if you want to pass a lanyard through there when it is closed there is plenty of clearance so you're not going to be um, clipping the lanyard if it's in as well now one thing that I will say and this is this is where some of the differences start to come in knife blade thickness is identical in fact if i put these back to back so that the uh, the recesses in the jimping 
uh, are on there. Apart from any subtle, maybe minute millimeter differences, which will come down naturally when these are being ground, um, the two blades are identical. The sabre grind comes up roughly, and again, it might be maybe half a millimeter variance between the swedge across the top. I can't really put these on top of each other, or maybe, no, I can't really, even, I can't really do it that way either. Uh, but if I could get these on top of each other, you'd be able to see that the grinds on them are exactly the same. They are both a hollow grind, both have a satin finish to them as well, uh, and the uh, and the choils again are in, are exactly in the same place. The pivots are roughly in the same place, but what you may notice that the pivot on the um, on the button lock is slightly smaller. Um, Mainly that is because of the button and the, and the mechanism for the button that's in there. They, they did need to make that smaller on the outside. However, on the inside looking in, I don't think there is a difference in size between the two of them. Uh, the width of the scales, the width of the knife, uh, pretty much identical. But when I do put them back to back like this. Let's just make sure that they are lined up. That's now lined up. Okay. What you may notice is that where the cutout for the lanyard hole here, it's ever so slightly longer. So the scales on the um, on the button lock are maybe a millimeter or two longer, or at least. The the handle itself is maybe a millimeter or two longer so that when it's open like this um, the button lock is about two millimeters longer. Apart from that when I put them on top of here as well um, the palm swells or the uh, through here are identical uh, where it thickens out towards the end of the palm swell again pretty much identical and again, uh, and the um, the choil here or the finger choil stopping your hand from moving forward it's identical as well opening these with the CVV Elementum or at least the original one this was a flipper and it just the action on this and this was the one thing that really made me fall in love with this knife the uh, the ceramic caged ball bearings on this butter smooth on the <laughs> see I tried to do the liner lock on this one I do this right so this is a difficulty between these this one is a liner lock which you know that's how you close it and it will uh, if I can get this at the right angle it will drop shut on this one we haven't got a liner lock because we have the button lock so when this is closed ceramic caged ball bearings on this as well unbelievably buttery smooth I actually think that this one pips it this one is butter smooth this one is just extra level buttons butter smooth so yeah it's very simple very easy to actuate that and flip it open you can also open it with your hand like that if you wanted to there isn't a thumb nick on there but there's just enough that you can pinch this obviously you can do that with the original one as well and you, you can you can pull that open with the button lock on this if you want to you can pinch that in and you can flick it open as well it's not a flick knife it's not a gravity knife either although it is i suppose gravity that opens that but in its closed position like this if i was to hold all this gravity will allow it to open but really you do need to give it a little bit of momentum for it to be able to come out it's not classed as a gravity knife because it doesn't move forward when it when it actuates but being able to open that like that is super fidgety so I play with my knives when I'm on zoom calls at work this has now become my zoom fidget knife the trick is trying to get it so that you let go of the button just as it comes down. The inertia will make it bounce back. The barrel spaces on here, there is a good three, maybe four millimeters before it even becomes into contact with them. The bit that actually makes it spring back is the, is the actual button lock here itself. So the mechanism, it moves forward and then where the where the tang is there it's actually the tang or the recess within the tang that stops that from over rotating so that it hits the barrel locks so where you get that 
that bounce back it's not here and it's not the actual cutting edge hitting the spacers uh, it is on the on the inside there super smooth super nice you can flick it you can you can kind of do that with it it's just a ridiculously nice knife and yeah I've kind of fallen in love with this one yeah very nice indeed okay I've got something to admit the Civivi Elementum was my favoritest knife. The CVV Button Lock 2 Elementum is now my favoritest knife. I freaking love this knife. I think CVV might have watched my original piece of content and seen just how glowing and kind of enthusiastic I was about it. But now going back to my Elementum, which I just messed around when I was yeah, I didn't realize I was making some bloopers content. Hey, yeah, stay tuned and there's bloopers content at the end. But now every single time I have my OG uh, Elementum, I keep pinching it to, to close it. Uh, it's so natural having that there. You still have all of the things that made the Elementum such a special mid-range knife. All of that in here, plus that button lock, yeah. If you're after an exceptionally good mid-range knife, then you just need to pick one of these up. Just do it, just, just get one, just, yeah. So, thank you again. I know I gushed a little bit at the beginning of this content, but it really does mean a lot to me when, as I say, you know, manufacturers reach out to me. So thank you again to CVV for sending this to me. Obviously at this point, I wanna say, yeah, I'd love to work on some more knives with you guys in the future. Um, but yes, we'll, we'll see how that goes. And yeah, I will leave all of CVV's links below so that you can see more from them. I'll leave some of my social media links as well. But for now, as always, stay safe, stay more stay EDC. Probably should have. Oh no, I was stopped. Now I'm recording. Got a bit deep to and, and stay EDC. Yeah, stay safe, stay Morlander, and stay EDC. Hi, I'm Randy White, and this is The Essential Mix. Ba -ba -bum, do, 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 ba -ba -bum. Anyway, I keep, why do I keep pulling funny faces? I don't know, I don't, anyway. Can't believe I dropped it. What a dick. What a knob. I freaking love this, the Elementum though. Action. Ooh. I do this all the time now. I do this, now that I've got the button lock, I'm doing this, because there's such similar knives. That's a line locker. And I'm, I'm like, well, I'll get that now, but I, I, I flick it out and I'm like, ooh, oh, uh, because I keep wanting to do the button lock on it. There you go. It's getting in the bloopers, obviously, because I dropped it like a knob. Anyway, where were we? Uh, you're probably going to go now, because you've watched the bloopers. If you stay to the end, thank you. Here's a, let's have a, yeah, there's a mall and a hug. Now you can go. Go on. It's probably time for bed. You should not be binge watching me instead of going to bed. And you've got work in the morning. Go on. Good night. Maybe.